Hi guys, I'm Dan, DB3D, DB3D Dan, whatever you want to call me. Anyway, in a previous video, we installed Raspbian on the Laferite, which is a Libre computer SBC, small board computer. And now we're going to follow that up and we're going to go ahead and get Clipper installed. This way we can use it with our 3D printers, running Clipper, of course. I do a lot of live streams. So I'm not used to this whole editing and cutting and clipping and things like that. So I try to film my videos in a way that's more comfortable for me. So bear with me while we go through this process. The first thing you're going to need is obviously the Lefrit set up and running with Raspbian. As you can see, jump screens here. There we go. As you can see, I do have that up and running. And I actually am set up with the, or going to use for this setup, the Clipper Install and Upgrade Helper. Uh, it's a great little utility. I'm very thankful that this was put out. It makes installing Clipper all that much easier. And before we get started, one thing I want to point out is in my previous video, I said that we enabled or we could enable SSH using the imager. That did not seem to work very well. So what you'll want to do is you want to click up here on the little Raspberry, go down to Preferences, go down to Raspberry Pi Config, and then in here when it loads, maybe it'll load. There we go. You're going to want to go ahead and click on Interfaces, and just make sure you tick the little box here for SSH. It'll restart, and when it comes back, you'll have SSH enabled. SSH is just nice because then this way you don't have to physically go to the device to get in and do things going forward. So, just as a little safety, go ahead and enable that now so that it's ready to go. You may have to reboot the device once or twice, but once you do, you'll have SSH enabled. Uh, again, now we're going to go ahead and get started, because... Uh, like I said, I'm more of a live streamer than I am an actual content creator. So this video is a little choppier all over the place. I apologize again in advance, but I do like to try and get straight into it. So I'll stop talking and let's get going. I mean, I guess I'll keep talking, but let's get going. Uh, you're going to want to go ahead and go to this website right here at the top. Uh, if you cannot find it, easiest way to do it is just go in and type in K-I-A-U-H in Google. Do a quick search and you should see the GitHub for it. When you get here, you're going to kind of scroll down a little bit and you'll see some instructions to on how to get it installed. So we'll want to go ahead and load up our terminal here. Let's move terminal off to the side just a little bit so you guys can see a little better. First thing it tells you to do is do a CD space tilde. So we'll do it anyway. We don't need to, but we will. And then now, because I don't like to type a lot, we're just going to copy the git command here. Right click and hit copy. I actually want to copy the whole thing, not just the highlighted link. So we'll copy that. Go back in here. Right click and we're going to hit paste. Once we do that, we hit enter. And now it's going to go ahead and clone that and get the files that it needs. Only takes a few moments. And then now we can go ahead and actually run the, S, uh, uh, the uh, shell command here. So we'll just do a dip slash or period slash K-I-A-U-H. Whoops, not D, H. Did I get an H in there? It looks like I typed an F this time. Let's try H. There we go. Slash, and then we type it again, K-I-A-U-H. Whoops, H. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. And then S-H, and hit Enter. And then this is going to go ahead and run. And there's everything... There's everything you're going to need right there in front of your face. First thing we want to do is hit one for install because we want to install stuff and we want to hit one for Clipper. And that's going to ask us to select a version of Python. I live a little dangerously, so I'm going to hit two and I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to install the version three, which they say is experimental, but a lot of Clipper is switching over to Python three, so it probably wouldn't hurt. But if you want to play it safe, you can go ahead and just hit uh, one. Uh, the steps going forward will not change regardless of which one you choose here. So go ahead and pick the one that you'd like to use. Uh, again, I picked two. And then down here, it's asking us how many instances of Clipper we want to set up. I'm only going to use one instance, so we'll leave it as one and hit enter. Yes, we want to do one. The capital Y in there indicates that if you just press the enter key, it will by default select yes as the answer instead of no. But we're going to go ahead and just hit enter here. This is going to go through the process. It's going to grab some files. This may take a little while. So rather than make you guys wait while it does all this, we'll be right back. 
All right, guys, once that step is done, the next thing that comes up, it's going to ask you to add the user Pi or whatever your user is uh, to the TTY group. We're going to go ahead and tell it yes to that. So just hit enter. And then now that part is done. Now we're on to installing Moonraker, which is number two. So we're going to go ahead and hit number two and hit enter. Yes, we wish to install Moonraker. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter again. And it's going to go through, it's going to see what files it has and what files it needs, and it's going to start that process of downloading and installing the files. Once that part is done, you'll be back at the command prompt. So I'll see you guys back at the command prompt. I should note that during this install process, it will come up at some point or could possibly come up at some point and ask you for some more stuff. So as we come up to the next event, I will go ahead and let you guys know what we need to do. So just keep following along. All right, guys, that part's all done. Now we're on to installing main sale is my preferred choice, but I just want to let you guys know here at this point where it says Clipper interf uh, web interfaces, you do have two choices. You have main sale and fluid. There's a third party web interface for Octoprint. If you're familiar or more comfortable with that, just know that the two that are designed to work with Clipper tend to have more functionality and are more feature rich. So I personally like main sale over fluid, so I'm going to go ahead and hit number three. And we're going to go ahead and get main sale installed. So we'll hit number three and hit enter. And then it's going to say perform action. I don't know why it didn't go there the first time, but three and hit enter. And there we go. So now it's working. We're going to let this part run. It's going to take a little while and we'll come right back. All right, guys, during the process here, it's going to come up and it's going to ask us now if we want to install webcam support. I always say yes to this. So we're going to hit Y and hit enter. And we're going to let it run and continue on down its little path there towards completion. As you can see now, it's going to ask us if we want to install the macros. And of course, we want to install macros. So we can either hit Y and hit enter or just hit enter because by default, it wants to install those. We'll let it go through this process. We'll get the macros installed. It's going to do the thing it needs to do, and we'll be up and running here in just a few. So I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. We are done with the install portion of getting Clipper on the uh, La Ferrite, a.k.a. the Fry. And uh, at this point here, we can go ahead and we can hit the old back button or B. Uh, there is more options in here just before we hit that back button. I just want to explain. Uh, Clipper screen is nice if you're going to be using a screen with it. It doesn't hurt to install Clipper screen now. If you do, make sure you did enable uh, SSH though, uh, like I showed at the beginning of the video, because the problem you're going to run into is once Clipper screen is installed, it wants to run as the primary desktop and you will not have access to all this fun stuff and you'll need to get in and do everything from command. So, if you install Clipper Screen now, just know that Clipper Screen will take over and you will not have your lovely Raspbian desktop there to go back to or whatever flavor of Linux you're using. Uh, there's also, again, like I said, the Octoprint third-party web interface. Again, I like main sale, so that's the one I use. There is a pretty G-code, Telegram bot, Obiac, I believe it's Obiac or Obi Obiac, Obiac. Uh, for Clipper, which is a uh, remote monitoring, uh, allows you remote monitoring of your printers. And then, of course, the uh, MPEG streamer, if you'd like to go ahead and stream that out uh, to other places, you can go ahead and install that as well. Probably wouldn't hurt to install the webcam streamer, but I'm going to leave that out for right now, or at least out of this video. So let's go ahead and hit that back button and hit enter or B and enter. Now at this screen here, we can see what all is installed. We can see that we do have one instance of Clipper installed. We have one instance of Moonraker installed, and we have one instance of Mainsail installed. Just know that Clipper runs, Mainsail takes care of all the web interface stuff, and, or uh, Moonraker takes care of all the web interface stuff, and Mainsail is your web interface. So those are the three things that we need to make sure we're installed before we could get going farther. So let's go ahead and hit Q to quit and hit the old button there, and now we're back to the command prompt. At this point here, we need to switch over to the other screen so you guys can check everything out. So let's go ahead and pause this for a moment, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, we went to the, uh, went to another computer on my network here, and uh, went to the IP address of the Fry, or the Le Ferit, or the 805 whatever you'd like to call it. But we went there, we typed in the IP address for it. In my case, it was uh, 
192.168.1.112. So I went there. And as you can see, Clipper is up and running. We do have a couple of things at this point that we need to do in order to make it work. We need to go to machine. We're going to go ahead and delete this printer config file because I have a pre-saved or pre-configured file that I'm going to go ahead and upload. So give me just a minute to get that uploaded. I'll be right back and then we'll plug in the printer and we'll see that everything is working. All right, guys, we're back. I got my camera showing the Le Frit over there. I've got my config file that I re-uploaded, and all you got to do for that is just click right here, the little arrow. You hover over, it'll say Upload File. If you've already created one, if not, there's a whole long process that I'm not going to go through right now on how to set up a config file. When that time comes, I'll make another video. This is just to kind of show that Clipper is up and working on the device. So from here, we can go back to the dashboard. And we can see that it is telling us that it does not see what it needs to see. My, my file's been uploaded. I'm going to move a little bit here in my, wheel, my creaky old chair. We're going to grab the USB cable. We're going to take this and plug it in. This is plugged into, currently I have it plugged into an Ender 3 uh, Pro that is running Clipper on it. And now that that is plugged in, let's just go ahead and hit restart firmware. I might have to restart the printer here for it to go, or we may have to just restart the entire device. So let's just click up here in the corner on the power button. Let's tell it to go ahead and do a reboot. We'll let the whole device reboot. Once it's done and it's back up, I will be right back with you guys. All right, guys, as you can see, I did a restart. I have the computer plugged in uh, to the, well, the printer plugged in, sorry, to the computer. And as you can see, it is up, it is working. Uh, let's go ahead and click over here on machine. One thing I will tell you guys ahead of time is once it's up and running, there is a spot where you need to get this here, which you can follow along in the Clipper install guide. Um, the Clipper install guide is on the website on how to find this here. It's fairly simple, and once you've got everything configured, you'll get this little address right here. Now let's go ahead and just close that. Come back here. And for fun, I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera over to the printer and show you guys that all the stuff I'm doing is being done from the clipper here. So one moment to prep and we'll be right there. All right, guys, got that all adjusted. I'm going to go ahead and click over here on the little home all. So let's go ahead and click on the home all. And you can see that by clicking home all, everything is moving as it should. So again, guys, it's not a very hard process. It's pretty easy to do thanks to the Clipper install and upgrade helper utility. Uh, it works really good on any Linux distro uh, that I've tried so far. And as you can see, again, and I got to take that as you can see out of there. I'm sorry, guys. Beat me up in the comments for it. Go ahead. It's fine. I, I, I can take it. I can take it. Um, but there you go. It's up. It's running. It's working. Uh, Hopefully we'll put together some more videos for you guys here in the future with some more how-tos to help out a little bit. I try to do a more Cliff Notes version of things. I try to cut out all the uh, fluff, just make them short and sweet. So hopefully you guys are good with this. This is about a 15-minute about a video. So hopefully it helps you guys out. If it did, please give me a like and subscribe. I know that's the cheesy YouTuber thing to say. I'm not really, again, a YouTuber. I'm more of a streamer. But, you know... I'll figure out help you guys out where I can. Stay out of trouble, stay out of jail, and happy 3D printing, guys. Till the next one, see ya.